The Night Beat starts right now. Crowds caught off guard at the San Antonio Zoo as part of a tree falls during a very busy spring break day. Viewer video shows the moments after that massive piece came crashing down onto guests. We flew over the zoo just after 6 o'clock this evening. The tree and the trunk that was originally left behind have already been removed. Now, seven people were taken to the hospital. We know that at least one was considered priority one, which typically indicates a life-threatening injury. Tonight, one expert is weighing in on what may have caused that tree to break. The night team's Jonathan Cotto joins us now. So, Jonathan, what could he tell you based on that video that he saw? David, the expert we spoke to was able to quickly identify the tree here at the zoo as a cedar elm. He says the cedar elm is a very common tree throughout Texas and by its size, he says that branch that broke off here could have weighed anywhere from 1,500 pounds to 2,000 pounds. But we can take a look at what that scene looked like earlier today. The collapse happening around a habitat near birds of the world at the San Antonio Zoo. The arborist George Cardenas has not inspected that tree himself, but he says based on what he could see from Sky 12 video, the tree may have been overweight and with some decay in the union. That's the part where the branch and the trunk join. He says what happened at the zoo today, although unfortunate, is not that uncommon. This part of uh, San Antonio in Texas, um, with the drought and the weather conditions, some of these trees, um, you know, they have a hard time adapting to this environment. Uh, cedar elm in the zoo, there's a lot of factors working against the tree from underground utilities, sidewalks, uh, soil compaction, people walking around the tree, uh, and things like that will reduce oxygen and water pockets in the soil and definitely minimize uh, mineral and nutrient resources available to the tree. We know we are expecting some strong winds to hit our area. Cardenas says weight reduction is very important. That's pruning your trees and looking out for heavy branches and any signs of discoloration, decay or fungus and of course annual assessments. Now the San Antonio hears remained open throughout the day. The part where the tree broke off it was blocked off to guests while they were at in attendance here at the zoo. We also reached out by email to the zoo to learn if they had performed any annual assessments to ensure their trees were in optimal health and condition. We have yet to receive a reply. Reporting live outside of the San Antonio Zoo, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Well, thank you, Jonathan. And as Jonathan mentioned, we do expect a period of strong to potentially severe winds through San Antonio in the next 24 hours. In fact, tomorrow night, close to midnight, there is a risk for scattered severe uh, storms as a squall line of storms moves through Texas uh, right around uh, with a cold front as well. And the primary threat with that squall line will be gusty winds up to 70 miles per hour. There is going to be a risk also for some ice isolated hail as well. And again, the timing on this is tomorrow night closer to midnight. So that's the first impactful weather timeline you need to know. We'll talk more about that in detail coming up in the forecast. We also have a big temperature drop by Friday morning. It's going to be windy on Friday morning too, with gusts up to 40 miles per hour and the cold will last through the weekend with periods of rain possible as well. We could see about half an inch to an inch of rain, which would help out our drought situation. We've got exceptional Exceptional drought across uh, San Antonio up toward Fredericksburg. So hopefully the spring, not only the event next uh, up in the coming days, but the spring itself will bring us some more rainfall. We need help with the drought. Changes in those rain patterns are forcing some farmers to plan differently for future droughts. And the night team's Patty Santos takes us to Fredericksburg, where we'll learn how the lack of rain is affecting peaches. Rainwater is like the gift of life. It just makes everything flourish. At Jensky Orchard, the farm is blooming. This is a, you know, an orchard that's in its prime right here. But a vital part of farming season is approaching rain season. Does not happen. This is the time sixth generation I'm landowner Travis Jensky tracks closely years. on his rain notepad. Uh, last year, we had 15 inches and 85 points all year round. 
That's half the average rainfall Fredericksburg sees in a year. According to KSAT Weather, in 2022, the area got just over 14 inches. The year before, nearly 25 inches. In 2020, it was still below average at 26 inches and less than 14 inches of rain in 2019. We've had to drill a few more wells and really lucky that we're able to do that. Um, and hopefully that can just keep up with, with the crops. Ain't nothing like well water. They're trying to stay ahead by drilling more wells and digging more ponds to catch rainwater. But even so, water must be used methodically and sparingly. The last couple of years have been very dry, so our wells have gone down consistently. Horticulture Extension agent Beth McMahon says the area needs a good soaking rain to recharge groundwater. We're moving out of La Nina, which is good, so that increases our chances to get more moisture. So, but. It's Texas. You don't know what the weather is going to do. You really don't. The lack of rain last year brought on an unexpected surprise for them. The silver lining was smaller peaches because of lack of rain, but they were some of the sweetest peaches we've ever grown because the sugar content was so high. Jensky has learned a thing or two about farming and his rain note powder reminds him to just stay optimistic. There's very few months that it doesn't rain at least a little bit. It may not be much, but it'll be a little bit. Rain will eventually show up. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Pick your own strawberry season starts in April at the Jinsky Farm. In May, you can look for blackberries, and the peaches should be ready to pick sometime after May. That's what we're waiting for, right, those peaches. All right, switching gears now. It's really getting old, but that doesn't mean that it's any less painful. We're talking about the road work along St. Mary Street and how it's affecting businesses. Intersection closures, detours, alternating lanes have been in place this week, but it's nothing new for restaurant and bar owners along St. Mary's. We spoke with the owner of a restaurant in the area. She says the construction work is bad for her bottom line. Business was stellar up until the pandemic and now recently uh, the construction. We don't want to uh, rush them. Everything needs to be done as it should be done, but uh, you know, we, we would like to be doing better. After those projects are done, two-way traffic along North St. Mary's is going to reopen. It's a lot of stuff to get through, but we have the full closure schedule on our website for you to check out on ksat.com. We have new developments tonight just into our newsroom. A woman who was arrested for retaliation following that brutal dog attack at a west side neighborhood has been released from jail. Bear County court records show 26 year old Destiny Marie Cardona was released on March 10th after she paid her bond of $25,000. Police say Cardona yelled at a witness in the attack and threatened to kill that witness and their family member. Authorities said Cardona is the sister of one of the dog's owners, Abilene Schneider. All right, so after that deadly dog attack stemming from a well-known nuisance home, the city of San Antonio wants to start a new program to tackle nuisance neighbors. City staff now working on a new program that's modeled after the existing dangerous assessment response team. You may know it as DART. It already tackles the worst of the worst nuisance properties. The home on Depla Street, where the dogs lived, had reportedly been the subject of more than 100 911 calls and dozens of 311 calls in less than three years. However, a city spokeswoman told KSAT that the types of calls weren't severe enough to require DART. OK, so now let's talk about this new program, because this would be different. It would focus on homes just like that one that have a number of calls even if they are low priority. Meanwhile, friends and family began paying their respects tonight to the victim of that vicious dog attack. Tonight, people gathered for a visitation and rosary service for Raymond Najera Jr. and his funeral is tomorrow morning. Take a really close look at your screen. Have you seen this girl? Right now, San Antonio police are looking for 14 year old Kiana Galbraith. She was last seen one week ago on Spring Lark Drive near Babcock. She has brown hair, brown eyes, and has a nose piercing. If you know anything that can help police find her, you're asked to call SAPD's Missing Persons Unit. That number is on your screen, 210-207-7660. The first hearing happening today in the case of an abortion pill lawsuit that could pose a threat to the nationwide availability of the popular medication. The hearing took place in Amarillo, where the courthouse was also the scene of protests, a conservative Christian group hoping to reserve the federal approval of the drug. The judge did not make a decision today, but says he plans to do so soon. 
We spoke with an area lawyer about what that decision or when that decision may come. There could be another hearing, but, but typically the judge will rely on what's already been submitted and the arguments that were presented today. Uh, but, you know, in terms of drafting an opinion, uh, it could be uh, a couple of days, could be a week, could be a month. Uh, it really just kind of varies depending on the judge's comfort level uh, with a written opinion. According to the FDA, the medication is the most common form of abortion. Now for a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. A terrifying scene for a mother and her baby girl after a crash in southwest Bear County. It happened around 11 this morning on Wisdom Road near Lytle. BCSO deputies say the woman was driving behind another vehicle that was pulling a trailer. At some point, the woman crashed her vehicle into the back of that trailer, crushing her vehicle. The woman was airlifted to the hospital while her daughter was taken by ambulance. No word on their condition tonight. And several people are moving to a new apartment after a fire tore through six units at a northwest side complex. This was a scene just before 11 this morning on Northwest Loop 410 near Bandera Road. Crews say heavy smoke could be seen from the second floor. The units were left with fire and water damage. We're still working to learn what exactly sparked those flames. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. Texas has $98 million available to help renters, but will it be enough to meet the need? Why a program that aims to help is closing almost two weeks early. Hey guys, Mark here. The tax deadline is fast approaching, and because of the weekend, you've got a few more days to file all that paperwork. Tomorrow on GFSA, some changes you need to know about to make sure you're getting the most out of your refund. If you've been watching us for a while, you know that this has been a thing. We have asked for the Department of Public Safety to release records into the mass shooting at Robb Elementary. And now another group of people is doing the same thing. They're also asking. We're talking about the victims' families. They want a court now to force DPS to release that information. An attorney representing six victims' families filed a plea to a state district judge this week in Austin. The families are pushing for the records because they're at the center of an ongoing lawsuit that multiple media organizations filed against the state agency. Now, we should mention that KSAT is also a part of that lawsuit. However, DPS officials refuse to release them, saying there's a pending investigation exemption. More applicants than funding. That is why the Texas Rent Relief Program has moved its application deadline to 11.59 a.m. tomorrow. It's almost two weeks earlier than originally announced. The program helps people with rent and utilities. Qualifying first-time applicants could get up to 18 months of rent and utility assistance that can be applied to past, current, or future bills. Once again, you've got a little over 12 hours to get it done. If you want to apply, we have details on how to apply right now on KSET.com. Yeah, and good luck to you if you are waiting for that program to come through for you. All right, now here is a live look right yeah. now. 67 degrees. All right, when we were out here at 6 o'clock, it was 71 degrees. Totally mild temperatures, yeah. totally fine. But Sarah, you're talking about this is preparation time. It is because tomorrow night is when we're going to see the risk for severe weather. And then you're going to want to bring the winter jackets out because it's going to be very cold. First, I want to take you through the day tomorrow. Again, you won't see too much tomorrow during the day other than a few morning showers, about 30% coverage. So you may have to turn on the windshield wipers for your morning commute tomorrow. We'll be at 65 degrees to start the day. We'll gradually see some clearing and it'll be a warm one. 80 degrees for the high in the afternoon, partly cloudy, a warm day, but pretty quiet during the day. It's in the evening when most of us are trying to sleep that we'll start to see some storms moving through. Those storms will be a line of storms, a squall line, very fast moving with damaging winds being the main severe weather threat. And it's primarily after about midnight. Here's a look at the future cast tomorrow in the afternoon. This is a snapshot at seven o'clock. Dallas Fort Worth will be dealing with severe weather as this front moves through. This is a strong front by about 11 o'clock tomorrow night. We'll see some storms from Del Rio up into the hill country, some of which could be severe, but not yet raining in San Antonio. Then after midnight, we'll start to see some rumbles of thunder, uh, hear some rumbles of thunder rather. And then that's when that quick moving line of severe storms is expected to move through San Antonio again. 
main threat would be damaging wind gusts of 60 to 70 miles per hour, but we can't rule out a few pockets of quarter sized hail as well. This is a snapshot at 3 o'clock in the morning, Thursday night into Friday. We'll continue to see rainfall through early on Friday morning as well, potentially affecting the Friday morning commute. Snapshot at 7 o'clock on Friday morning. Then by mid morning, the rain will come to an end, but the second thing we'll have to deal with is the wind and the cold weather on Friday. It's going to be a shock to the system on Friday. We'll have wind gusts from the north Friday morning up to 40, 45 miles per hour as temperatures fall into the 40s. And so it's going to feel like it's closer to freezing around San Antonio and feel like it's in the 20s across the hill country on Friday morning. Winter's last grasp. By the way, wind chills do not affect pipes. They do not affect plants. Temperatures will be above freezing. It's just going to feel a lot colder than that. Then to top it all off, this cold air is going to stick with us for four days all the way through Monday. Monday, the official start of spring, the spring equinox, going to be the coldest day on our forecast, all because of this extra shot of cold air that's also going to bring with it a chance for more rain on Sunday and again on Monday. I'm showing you this graphic because it's showing a little bit of wintry possibility up in the hill country. Here's the thing. It's still going to be above freezing at the surface, so even if you see some flakes mixed in with the rain in the hill country, there will not be any impacts, okay? No issues with travel. The other thing is, in San Antonio, it's unlikely to see any flakes whatsoever. We'll just have some rain. So again, here's what you need to know. Storms tomorrow night, windy and cold Friday, and then damp and cold Sunday and Monday. So a bit of a roller coaster on the forecast, showing you it all together here in the seven day. Cold mornings in the upper 30s, cold afternoons in the 40s and 50s. We will finally be back into the 60s and 70s by Wednesday, a Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Uh, and again, I, I am calling this winter's last grasp because it's kind of ironic that spring starts on Monday and it's going to be the coldest day in our forecast. Just a little tease. For Absolutely. Us. And we will be tracking those storms live on the KSAT Weather Authority app and on air if necessary. Yeah, good time to download the app. Yep. It's a great resource. Thank you, Sarah. You know there's going to be some dudes walking around this weekend with their long sleeves shirts on and shorts. and Going what? And their flip-flops going. It's spring break. <laughs> I'm not cold. Larry, well, you might be one of those guys. That'll be me. I probably won't have flip-flops on, though. Like, I feel no. like there's a story there. <laughs> uh, You're not a flip. Are you a croc guy? No, 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 okay. no, no, no. Nothing Never. against crocs, but Never. I just don't like to wear crocs personally. <laughs> so, hey, you know, I want to talk about Spurs, Mavs. This was like one of the dick games back in the day when it was the big three against Dirk. This was an awesome contest that went to overtime. And in the NFL, the Dallas Cowboys saving some money by cutting Zeke. <laughs> Coming up. in the Mavericks tonight. This rivalry isn't what it used to be back when these two were Western Conference powers, but it's still fun to watch. First quarter, Keldon Johnson is back in action. He drives in for a lefty layup off the glass in the Spurs lead 14 to 13. Blake Wesley playing defense now, steals the ball, and then he races back to give the Spurs a two-point advantage, and they led 29-28 after one. Late second quarter, one second to go when Devontae Graham goes three ball to put the Spurs on top at halftime, 62-60. Third quarter, Malachi Branham connects from downtown, extending the Spurs lead to 8, 82 The Mavs have cut that down to 6, 94-88, heading to the fourth quarter. Now Dallas would tie this at 114 with a buck 52 to go, but the Spurs answer right back with Mamu, who makes a 28-foot three-pointer and the Spurs go up 117 to 114. Final seconds off a of Mavs miss. Keldon throws the ball down the court to Jones for a layup and Dallas leads by one with five seconds to go. Spurs down two, 1.8 left. Branham with the inbounds pass feeds Keldon for a slam dunk and we're going to overtime tied at 121. That was beautiful, but 
Despite the late comeback, the Spurs still fall 137-128 in overtime. We'll have more on this game tomorrow. Now the Grizzlies will come to town to play the Spurs Friday night at 7 at the AT&T Center. Before tip tonight, the Spurs announced that Charles Bassey will miss the remainder of the season after suffering a non-displaced fracture in his left patella. The injury happened on this play during the first quarter of last night's Spurs Magics game. Running back Ezekiel Elliott is looking for a new team. That's right, the Dallas Cowboys released the two-time rushing champ today, making him a free agent. Zeke is 27 years old and is coming off his least productive season in rushing yards and yards per carry. He was set to count $16.7 million against the salary cap with a $10.9 mil non-guaranteed base salary. As a post-June June 1st cut, this will save the team nearly $11 million against the cap for this upcoming season. Now, the boys also restructured defensive end Demarcus Lawrence's deal to open up nearly nine million in cap space and the boys will rework the contract of offensive lineman Tyron Smith to make it more cap friendly with playtime incentives. And now that the new NFL year is here, the Vikings wasted no time in announcing their deal with Marcus Davenport, tweeting they've agreed the terms with OLB at Marcus JD84, the 14th overall draft pick in 2018. Davenport has spent the past five seasons with the Saints. Injuries have hampered his NFL career, but he's still an effective pass rusher off the edge when he's healthy. And how about this? Linebacker Ty Summers is all smiles, signing a deal with the New Orleans Saints. He was drafted by the Packers in the seventh round in 2019. The Reagan alum played three seasons with the Packers and then spent last season with the Jaguars and Saints on their practice squads. The wave is moving from Dayton to Birmingham, where the Texas A&M Corpus Christi Islanders will play Alabama in the first round in the men's basketball tournament. Last night in Dayton, the Islanders led Southeast Missouri State by 10 points in the second half, only to watch the Red Hawks tied up at 3.07 to go. Jalen Jackson, who scored a career-high 22 points, was asked how did they hold off the Red Hawks to win the first four games, 7 75-71. Just staying together. Uh, basketball is a game of runs, so we knew at some point they were going to make a run. We just had to stay together. Um, we rebounded. Uh, we made free throws, and yeah, we, we, we stuck together to finish the game up. Islanders mascot Izzy is having a fun time with the team's first round matchup tomorrow afternoon against top seed Alabama. It's a letter to the world's greatest boss asking to please excuse fill in the blank name from work Thursday afternoon. Curious if that's going to actually work. <laughs> Our Lady of the Lake softball coming up after the break. Well. Coming off a successful season last year, the Saints talked to us about what's in store with a game by game mentality. We just try to take it game by game, no matter like who we play, like I said, we just have to keep working hard. We have to act like we're playing, you know, the best team in the nation, um, no matter what, because we don't want to play down to anybody. Our Lady of the Lake University uses their culture to push towards their end goal. It's really just a, it's a system and an atmosphere of accountability where players kind of, you know, own the culture here and own the expectations. and. Uh, you know, with that, with that expectation comes a lot of responsibility, and, and I trust our players to do the right thing on and off the field. With a 20-4 and four record, the Saints' name is well known, but they say pressure is a privilege. It's definitely exciting because, like I said, people are like knowing, like they're finally seeing us, not just as, because once we were, oh, we're just playing Olu, but now we're like, oh, we're playing Olu, which I think is like, it just, it feels well-deserved. Graduate student Caitlin Terrazas says it's more than just a game. Just play for each other, uh, take care of each other. Um, we really treat each other like family here and uh, we take that to heart. The Saints will travel to Louisiana Christian later this week in hopes of continuing this win streak. Kelly Marsh, KSAT 12 News. That intern, Kelly Marsh, with That's the report, awesome. our wow. Lady of the Lake softball. The Saints have another fantastic season. And it's, it was Kelly's debut. Uh, for sports, I think she's been on the news before here with us. But All right. That was her first sports story. Okay, well, Kelly yeah. killed it. Good job. Awesome. Good she's job. Awesome. <laughs> Great stuff. And we'll be right back. After. And we'll see you tomorrow at work. Okay. I'll be here. Stuff, right? With Crocs. <laughs> with Crocs.
All right, attention dog lovers, look at that. Okay, so America has a new favorite dog, <laughs> and it's not the Labrador Retriever. It is the French Bulldog. He has unseated the lab as the most popular breed in the country. <laughs> that is according to the American Kennel Club stats from last year. It's actually the first time in 31 years the Labrador Retriever has not been in the top spot. And I gotta tell you, they're adorable. Well, how do you not love that face? I know, it's so cute. All right. All well, thank you cool. so much for joining us tonight. Remember to bundle up this See you weekend. tomorrow. See you tomorrow.